Hey folks, Dustin Zarni here, Democratic Elections Commissioner of Onondaga County, and welcome to Commissioner in a Car. Uh, this is the Village Elections on the Move, maybe, edition. And we'll be talking about that because an article came up this last week um, with Baldwinsville uh, having a weird situation happening, uh, possibly, um, in their March elections, but it's actually... That's just Baldwinsville. There's actually several other villages that are talking about moving their elections. But before I get into the meat of that, let's talk about where we stand on the presidential primary. Um, just a, a quick reference to last week's episode. We talked about what would happen, what would have to happen if to have New York not have a presidential primary. And I recorded that on the night of the New Hampshire uh uh, primary, and I postulated that if uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump had large victories, we could see a situation by February 6th um, where every candidate has pulled out and is possibly not going to have a primary. And I was partly right. <laughs> Donald Trump and Joe Biden did have large wins in New Hampshire. Uh, Donald Trump had a win of 12 points over Nikki Haley, his only rival alive in the, uh, not alive, but remaining in the race. Um, and Joe Biden tripled up, almost tripled up his opponents, despite not appearing on the ballot at all and having it be a write-in. These were big, large victories. However, the opponents seem to have uh, decided that... Um, they are saying at this point that they are staying in the race. Um, that's Dean Phillips and Nikki Haley and Marion Williamson also on the Democratic side. Um, so the question is, will we have a primary? Um, because even though they're saying they're staying in the race right now, there is still some possibilities about what's going to happen. On February 6th, next week, is a deadline. That is the deadline to um, drop out of the race for New York. Um, now, it should be say, stated that there's several Republican candidates that have suspended their campaigns, but have not actually filed the paper to drop out of the race, which means that they'll remain on the ballot. Um, Nikki Haley continues to say that she's going to go till at least Super Tuesday, which makes... Uh, the possibility of her dropping off on February 6th less likely because a Super Tuesday is in March, March 4th, and um, it's probably um, going to be, um, at least until then, she's going to stay on all ballots that she's on. February 6th is the deadline to, to pull out, so we'll see. Now, Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson uh, are saying that they're staying in the race. So Marianne Williamson had a little, you know, little dalliance with actually um, getting out of the race, but apparently is not. And Dean Phillips has said he's in it uh, for until the convention. Of course, everybody says that. The question there is, there is a South Carolina primary on February 3rd for the Democrats, but not till later in the month for the Republicans. So will a bad showing for... Dean Phillips and Marianne Williamson in South Carolina, will that dissuade them? And, and and will they act quick enough to get off the ballot on February 6th to eliminate the Democratic primary? Um, we will have to see. Uh, Nikki Haley continues to say she's going to stay in. I don't see any reason to disbelieve that she won't stay in until at least South Carolina, which is later in February and thus past the February 6th deadline. So, I believe that there will be a presidential primary, and I believe it will probably be on both sides. Um, but, you know, stranger things have happened, and we'll see what happens next week um, and, uh, and, and, and go from there. So let's talk about village elections. Oh, village elections. I love them. <laughs> so for those of you who are kind of following along and maybe don't live in a village, you may not know that villages elect their... Uh, local leadership at different times, or they can elect them at different times um, for um, different for different areas. So there are five villages uh, having elections this March, and 
uh, a village having an election in, in June this year. Uh, the rest of those either are not having elections this year or they have moved their elections to November in previous years. This is a choice. A village can have an election in March, June, or um, November. If they have it in November, it lines up with the Board of Elections calendar and the Board of Elections runs their election for free. Um, if they run it in March or June, they have the option of using the Board of Elections to run their election or they can run it on their own. Uh, and in any case, whether if the Board of Elections is running it, they have to re repay costs somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000 when the inspectors are paid and all of that. Um, so the question is, why do villages have elections in March and June uh, or in November? And usually it boils down to tradition. This is what the villages have traditionally done. Um, I have been a proponent for moving uh, village elections to November uh, for many different reasons, but the biggest reason is voter turnout. Uh, despite low turnout in November elections, uh, in despite, even in odd years, um, the village elections uh, actually have incredibly low turnout in March and June. Um, so the, there's been a movement over the last few years to move these elections in November, save the village the cost, and um, and then the villages would be able to, uh, you know, have elections when everybody else is having them, and so on and so forth. The arguments against that is some villages believe that it's uh, tradition and they don't want to move it, um, and some villages uh, feel like their their races will be lost in uh, November. I don't buy that argument, to be quite honest. I, I We hear this argument all the time. It's always better to have lower turnout because then those are the people who really care about the election. And that's usually a specious argument that is used for people who like having low turnout because it means less competition and less uh, uh, of a, uh, um, you know, ability for others to get on the ballot, in, in my opinion. I don't live in a village, so I don't get to vote on these things. However, the people in the villages do, and there's a new movement this year to force some villages to move their elections to November via a vote by the public. So it's not like they're forcing it by lawsuit. They're pretty going to put a referendum on the ballot uh, and have the public decide whether, whether they want to move from uh, March to November or from March to June, as we'll talk about soon. Um, Right now, there are five villages in New York, in Onondaga County, that have their uh, elections in November. Camillus, which has had their election in November for about 20 years now. And then in 2017, uh, three other villages joined them. Salve, uh, East Syracuse, and Tully. And then in 2019, Elbridge. Uh, the village of Elbridge joined the November uh, cause. So, uh, or the November election. So... There's five. There's about 17 villages in Onondaga County. The rest have it in, most of them have them in March, and some of them have in June. And most of those have village elections in the odd years. Uh, but this year, there are five villages having elections in March and one in June. Um, the election in June is Liverpool, which had an election last year as well. They seem to be ha have elections every year uh, in June because they have uh, two-year terms that are staggered. So, you know, some people get elected in odd years, some people get elected in even years. Um, and then there are five villages that are having elections in March. Uh, three of them that are run by the Board of Elections, Baldwinsville, um, uh, Baldwinsville uh, Fayetteville, and Manoa. And then there's uh, the village of Marcellus, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm blanking on the next, the other village, because we don't run their elections. So we're, and there's not a lot of activity in those elections that I know of right now. Um, so, uh, but you know, there's been a lot of talk in the villages of Fayetteville and Baldwinsville um, about whether uh, they should move their elections from March to November. And uh, we'll take Baldwinsville first, because that's what the uh, paper had the article about, because there's two competing ideas here. Um, so 
to move an election from from one period to another period, the voters have to vote on that. And uh, the voters get to vote on that by two different options. Either the the village board can vote on a resolution to put it on the ballot in the next general election, uh, whenever that general election would be, and that would be either March, June, or, or November, depending on when that village holds that election. Or the citizens can get together a petition, and as long as they file that petition at least 30 days before the um, next general election, then they can put a question on the ballot to move the election as well. So in Baldwinsville, the village trustees have put in a uh, resolution to move their election from March to June. Uh, the trustees felt like they didn't want to move it to November, but they didn't want to have petitioning happening in the dead of winter, so they're moving their election from March to June. However, there is a citizen-led uh, uh, petition going around, and if they get enough signatures, they're going to turn in theirs, I, I believe sometime in the next week or two, um, to be able to put on another competing proposition in the village of Baldwinsville um, to move their election from March to November. And the same thing is happening in Fayetteville. However, the trustees have not put on uh, a move. They want to keep their election in March, and there is uh, a citizen-led uh, petition uh, that will move the election from March to November, and that's expected to be turned in and put that on the ballot for this March election to, to move them to November starting next year. So that's what's going on. Now, you may wonder why, what's going to happen if there's two propositions for different times and they both pass. It's a good question. I wonder that myself because nobody really knows the answer to that. I've, I've checked the state board about it. Um, and because there are these two competing visions, uh, th we'll have to see what happens um, if, you know, if both propositions in Baldwinsville fail, no big deal. They fail. If uh, one passes and the other one fails, again, then the voters have chosen and will go with whatever they, they said. If both pass, there's a real good question about which petition and proposition is enacted or if neither is enacted because they uh, conflict. So it, it, it's going to be interesting. So my advice to people in Baldwinsville, make a choice. If you want it in June, vote yes on the June proposition. If you want it in November, vote yes on the, the November one and vote no on the other one that you don't want because if both pass, it's likely that it'll stay in March. Uh, so there are those, uh, there are those options. Um, so, and then the other thing that's happening is in Liverpool, uh, the newly uh, elected Democratic Board of Liverpool that were elected last year, they ran on moving the village elections to the Board of Elections and having them moved in November. That was one of their planks that they ran on, and they had an overwhelming victory um, in their June election last year. So they are fulfilling their promises. They've already moved the the Board of Elections to run the election in this upcoming June. And they are, they have um, asked for, the, they're going to ask their citizens to pass, to be on, on the referendum. I don't think they've passed it yet, but they've been very open that one of the things they're going to do is put it on the, um, uh, on the resolution in June uh, for the June general election to move that to a uh, November election. So, we have a lot of democracy happening here. And, uh, you know, it, it is, uh, it, and it, it's important to note that this is a little bit different than the Manlius uh, Ward election that happened last year, which was an attempt uh, to create a special election to decide to change the form of government. These are all happening at the general elections for these villages. So. March and June. These aren't special elections. They're already having elections at that time. It's not costing um, the villages any more money to put this proposition on the ballot. And of course, if they pass it, all it's going to do is move it to November and actually, you know, save them some money. So um, it, it, it's a little different. Uh, is it partisan? 
Well, Democrats want to move it to November. That Those are the groups that are passing the petitions. Uh, and it was a Democratic takeover in the Liverpool board that has led to Liverpool doing it. So it's become partisan. It shouldn't be partisan. But I will note that there are two Democrats on the Fayetteville board uh, that have been openly against it moving to March. Uh, actually, three Democrats that are registered Democrats. Uh, so there's, you know, there's, there's differences of opinion. And that's okay. Um, I think also okay is giving the voters their vote and having them choose. Um, and especially since they're not doing it at a special election, they're doing it at a regular election that that village is already holding elections at. So it's uh, going to be interesting to see what happens with those villages um, this fall. Um, or I'm sorry, this March. Um, we'll have more to talk about village elections. I'll be having the village democratic slate for man uh man or fayetteville and also uh you know on my zoom and zarni because they're running on the democratic line um and i may ask the the baldwinsville uh slate that is running to see if they want to get on my zoom and zarni line and then of course i'll be doing some weekly walks on baldwinsville and fayetteville who have competitive elections this march um and this also the you know highlight this uh this question about moving the election so we'll be talking about that later uh so uh that's all i got for commissioner in the car this week uh coming up this week on friday i will have my first zarni seminar of the year uh getting on the ballot for 2024 and then uh my weekly walk this weekend will be dustinzarni.com my my website year two of that um, and we got, I got some interesting stats to see how, how many posts I did and all the different uh, things that were on there. Uh, you know, and it is, that's my voter education website for out of Dog County in New York. And, you know, we're kind of slow right now. <laughs> I don't have any political subdivisions to look at, so I'm doing that. And it's just fun. Um, but um, then um, next week, for next week's Commissioner in a Car... I'll be going down to Albany uh, for my first educational day uh, to ask for money for boards of elections across New York State. I'm hoping that I'll be testifying. I won't know about that until the day before, but I've scheduled other meetings that day to meet with lawmakers about uh, the various needs of county boards of elections throughout New York State. So my commissioner car may be a commissioner in a train because I'll be coming back uh, about that. So. Uh, We'll talk about that next week. Remember to go to DustinZarni.com. You can subscribe. You'll get an email notification every time I do a post. Uh, and uh, that's where all my content lives. Um, and uh, it's always free. I'll never uh, have subscriptions. I'll never have ads. I always pay for it out of my own money because uh, I feel like this is my voter education uh, project for Onondaga County. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.